Okay, uh, welcome everybody to pra practice nine. Um, we would we uh, initially, uh, you know, obviously wanted to be able to do a lot of scrimmaging outside. Um, we we got some some weather days uh, to where if we get shoved inside, uh, we, we we still can get a bunch out of this. So what you're going to see today, we, we we just got uppers on. Everything will be controlled. There will be no situations. We're just, you know, basic working on uh, just some installation stuff. Uh, uh, limited special teams uh, would do a lot of individual stuff um, you know would do some pass rush stuff uh, some some blitz pickup one-on-one -on -one drills um, and then get into a bunch of scripted plays so unfortunately you won't see a whole lot of uh, you know we will do a tempo period there won't be anything live um, you know obviously going inside we'll be able to utilize this in controlled settings we can't utilize the indoor for live settings uh, so, but nine practices into it, that's what you're going to see. You won't see uh, Marcus Sims is at a funeral, um, and uh, Kennedy McCoy is at prom. I always let those guys go back <laughs> for prom. You know, a couple of them were gone for prom last week. A couple will be gone for prom next week. The one deal I make our early enrollees, the deal I make is that they can go home and do that. How's this cummerbund look? <laughs> no, I'm, no. I, I make them uh, bring back pictures. <laughs> I want to know what their date looks like, and I want to know what they what they wore. New coach that you hired this week. Tell us a little bit about him. You worked with him. Yeah, Tyron. I got a lot. I got a history with him. Obviously, you know, being at Houston was was a great player. His numbers speak for themselves. He's been in this offense for four years. The two years with myself, and then two years with uh, uh, Kingsbury, uh, who took over for me at, at Houston. So he's got a lot of familiarity with this offense. The one thing that didn't make sense to me, <clears throat> and we had a lot of interest in this job, uh, but the one thing that didn't make sense to me was bringing a guy in that, that didn't have familiarity with what we are doing. We got some experienced receivers, some guys that uh, are, are continuing to develop. Uh, don't have to teach him the offense, but he can teach them a lot of, a lot of nuances as far as being uh, you know, the technique aspect of things. So. Uh, he's a fierce competitor. Um, you know, he's he's a fiery guy. Uh, he, he's going to bring some knowledge from playing experience that I think will be very valuable. You guys also announced that the Will Greer would join the program this week. I know it's down the road, but why did you pursue him and why bring him into the program? Well, just simply, just a really good football player. You know, so anytime we have opportunities to bring in really good football players and we're going to do that. Our, our job is to coach up the guys that we have first and foremost, but continue to uh, recruit guys that can help us in the future. You had success with Clint. Did that help getting him? You know, it's a funny story. Those two guys got to know each other on an air, airplane. Uh, they were on. They were randomly sitting next to each other on a flight to New York, and they just kind of looked at each other and recognized who they were and just started talking. So. Uh, they, they had a they had a, a prior relationship and you know Clint's time here was 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 very valuable very good great experience for him he'll be the first to, to let you know that so whether that had any impact on him coming here or not I don't know why do you think you guys have had success with transfers whether it's Clint or Russell or Jack Riddick you guys have had some pretty good success yeah, yeah Charles Sims is pretty good too yeah. you know but uh, I, you know I think you, you based those guys with with limited you know, uh, eligibility left. You got it. They fit needs. So first and foremost, I think you got to make decisions based on what your needs are. Uh, they they got to want to be want to come here because their time is not going to be you know extensive here. Uh, so they we they got to fill a, a, a role and then they got to want to be here. Is the biggest thing. So I think that we've done that. We've said no to some guys. We've missed out on some guys, but we haven't really missed on some guys either. Nine practices in. Anything you really like? Anything you really don't so far? I just overall I like the attitude and the, the, the effort with, of the team more than anything. These guys have it, you, you always deal with spring practice hitting some lulls and not being able to get a whole lot done. We haven't hit that. Hopefully, we you don't see it today. Uh, but just you know, guys that are motivated to come out and practice and like playing the game. So I, I like their attitude. Um, you know, they show up and they're they're ready to work every day. And I think we're getting better every day. With Carrier being a Texas guy, would he still? Go to Lonnie's old recruiting territory, or is there going to be some shuffling there? We're we're working through that now. You know, we got doors like working through it now, 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 because recruiting's uh, on the horizon. You know, Lonnie's area from from you know we're going to put Blue in in Georgia primarily. Um, 
you know, we'll, we'll be able to hit North Carolina. I, we'll probably get Coach Tall involved with North Carolina a little bit just because his familiarity with being there. Uh, you know, and then it's basically Virginia and, 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 and Maryland is what we got to do. We'll, we'll probably end up hitting that by committee. You know, it'd be silly not to have Coach Carrier in Houston a little bit since how he grew up there and he's got a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of resources there, and he's got a lot of uh, familiarity with the high school coaches and a lot of relationships based on his past. So we'll probably get into Houston a little bit as well. Dana, yeah, how much could Carrier help you with special teams too? Uh, yeah, that 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 was that was an impact. I mean, this guy leads the country and and current. I think he sits up there tied for first for for kickoff returns. So he's got a wealth of knowledge with that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn them over to him and just let him get back there and coach the punt returners, coach the kick returners, and we'll see how it goes. Dana, did you glean anything from working so closely with the uh, receivers? Did I learn anything? Yeah, did you learn anything you didn't They didn't know? teach me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've coached them before, Mitch. You know, I mean, so, as far as personnel it, Yeah, it was fun just to get in there and, 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 and coach them up. And, you know, I'm, I'm always meeting with a lot of these guys in groups. Uh, but there are some one-on-one -on -one sessions that happen that never hurts. Uh, but but uh, that's what Coach Carey would do. I mean, he'll be able to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff with these guys, and I will continue to oversee that aspect of it from not only quarterbacks but offensive skill in general.